Hi Leo, welcome to Higher Source Tarot for your weekly tarot check. This is for the week of September 27th through October 4th for all Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. And as usual, I thank all of you so much for watching the readings and definitely for hitting that like button. When you like a video, it does something to the YouTube algorithm so that YouTube will then suggest those liked videos to people who are searching for Leo Tarot readings in the search bar. It's interesting, isn't it? And uh, and also, too, of course, for subscribing. I, I appreciate every single one of you. So thanks again. And if you're new, I'd love to invite you to join us and become a subscriber. I post new readings every Friday. And then typically, again, on either Monday or Tuesdays. And um, I understand it's always somebody's reading, but not always everyone. So if if it doesn't resonate, you can check back on the channel or you can even check a different part of your chart, okay? So let's get the messages, please, for Leo. What does Leo need to know, please? What does Leo need to know for the highest good of all concerned? With Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Here we go. So we'll do our uh, tarot reading here, and then we will do an oracle card reading with a yes, no, and a timeline. All right, let's see. All right, you've got the Ace of Cups, the Eight of Pentacles, the Emperor, and the Devil. You've got the Queen of Swords. Sorry, it just got uneven. The Six of Swords, the Hermit, Interesting, and the High Priestess, wow. All right, so you've got four major arcana here. Um, you've got Aries, Capricorn, Virgo here. You've got Air, so Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. You do have Earth, so Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus. And then you've got Water, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio here. So I, I do feel like for some of you, there's gonna be some kind of new offer. It could be it could be either way. So there's work here. I see money obviously indicated. Um, and even with the swords, you know, be aware of that. That <clears throat> even though the swords re represent communication and thinking, when the tarot was designed, they were the nobility. Okay, so this the swords class has more wealth to begin with. So um, and of course you don't have any wands here, but those are the upwardly mobile. And then of course the pentacles represent our earthly. Um, you know, in our 3D world, our earthly pleasures, earthly desires, things like that. But you've definitely got a new opportunity here. Um, you know, in terms of, of love, it's really, there's a deep love here. But I do feel like there's something about letting go of something, you know. And it, I don't know if somebody has some kind of limiting belief where they feel like people always abandon them. That's what I'm getting. And it's like there's this fear-based aspect to it this there's this wall up kind of in fear of moving forward with anyone I do get that and really a need to let go of that um because there's potential here there's great potential here but until whoever this is feels like they're worth it it's they're going to have a very hard time accepting this and manifesting something that will stay okay because once we have that ingrained in us and it's it can be embedded deep within. We can get all kinds of things to come into our lives. You could have a lot of success in many areas, but see that there's certain areas, especially with the relationships that seem to come and go. Um, <clears throat> you know, so it, I don't get strongly either way, you know, that it's an X necessarily, or it feels, it does feel more new, I guess, when I say that I don't get strongly. I guess I do get more that it's new love as I look at this. So, um, but again, there's great potential and it is somebody that you can trust. It's just really about cleansing your, you know, cleansing out the ego, kind of washing away the ego and filling that void with spirit, with that knowing that you can have do or be anything and, and really believing that though, because our vibration has to match our words because we'll get what we you know, we'll get not only what we expect, but we'll get what's in our vibration. So I can say all kinds of things, but if I don't really feel it and mean it, I'll attract something else. Um, I do feel like, though, with this Eight of Pentacles here, some of you may have been very focused on money. And I actually think for some of you, you've been making money and 
pro progressing. I see it in multiple cards. So let me just show you this together. In career, you're definitely moving forward, okay? Um, you know, with the Emperor here, the Six of Swords, and this Eight of Pentacles, you're moving forward with money. And certainly could be either either more responsibility at work, but not in a bad way. That's gonna it's gonna get you something out of it. I hate to say that; it sounds kind of like, but you know, why do we work? We work for money. I mean, you won't even if you're starting to put in some extra effort or take on some extra responsibilities. It does feel like you kind of just go with it, but in the end, you're gonna there's gonna be rewards for that. So go go keep going because it will be rewarded. Um, in terms of a relationship too, though, you know, again, I mentioned there's great potential here. Um, and I do feel like there's going to be some focus on self-improvement. And like I said, this sort of this cleansing of the, the ego, cleansing the ego out so that the spirit can shine through, um, you know, and it really is this focus on self-improvement and development of a lot of areas, you know, it's kind of like in the material plane developing the career but then also looking beyond that and you know into that more spiritual realm too and really understanding who we are and I'm actually looking at the hermit while I'm saying this but um I do feel like again there's a focus here on you know wanting to really develop a life wanting to move forward wanting to have a really balanced stable life and so with the emperor you definitely have that I mean you know, it's Aries energy and it is too. I do feel like there's this energy of this potential with the hermit and high priestess here. And the emperor brings in that sort of confidence to get things started. You know, the emperor is is bringing in the clarity of thought, especially too with the queen of swords here. That, you know, there's not any indecision going on around you where you're not sure what to do. It just feels like um, you know, you quiet your mind and open up and the next thing you know, it seems like the next best thing to do shows up. The next right idea, the next great idea just seems to unfold. So um, there's definitely a lot of confidence as you move forward into this next season. Now with this devil here, this can be about addiction, but I don't, I don't see a lot around you, you know, in these cards or really at all that tells me there's going to be a huge problem issue with somebody in addiction. Again, this feels more like letting go of limiting beliefs that have been in, installed in you along the way. And that can be from a lot of different sources. It can be from childhood. It can certainly be from bad relationships. And I know a lot of people, you know, will drop comments about breaking free of an, with a, you know, a toxic cycle or somebody that they believe truly was a narcissist and was gaslighting them and doing things to them and and it t there's a recovery period after you deal with somebody like that, okay? And even though when you start to realize you're being gaslighted and you kind of go, okay, I'm starting to see the insanity, it still does a number on you. It's hard to not have some effect from that. And, um, you know, so I do feel like with this, it really is about letting go of whoever this was. And certainly if you have sort of this mental conversation or mental comments that come in that, you know, criticize you, letting go of that too. And I talk about this periodically, the seven day mental diet by Emmett Fox. I mean, that's a great thing to listen to. And it, you listen to it once a day and it's just a short book. You could read the book too. I mean, it's available online in a PDF, I believe for free. Um, and, and really focusing on that because, um, you know, we become what we think about. And so when we have all of these, this noisy stuff running around in our heads like this, and it is, it's like him running around in your head with these two clamoring around behind him. Um, it, it just makes it, uh, you know, it makes us very unsettled. And so it's definitely letting go of that though. You have it indicated several times here. You know, now with this Queen of Swords, um, again, I mentioned you're going to have the clarity of thought here. And I also do feel like even though she can be kind of sharp, I do feel like it's more in service of having the right words. It, I don't feel like there's anything like an argument or anything like that here. I almost just feel like you kind of are have this facility to just articulate 
your mind clearly. And this to me really stands out with those of you that this is for work, where you're able to really give direction clearly, it's succinct, it makes sense to people, and it's a great energy to have. I don't see a downside to this really. She can be harsh, yes, and this is to the widow of the tarot, so be aware of that. Um, you know, you have the devil here, but I don't see I don't see anything else really that suggests there would be a, you know, I don't know. It may, you know, maybe too, it's sort of the death of, when I say she's a widow, it's the death of old ideas. Maybe that's why she's here. Um, but again, I mentioned before with the Six of Swords, it's definitely moving forward. And there's travel here too. I mean, you're going to have money to travel if that's what you're into. Um, but I just see too, money in a very comfortable way. Somebody's getting a new car. I mean, I'm getting new car smell right now, and I don't know who that is. So even this travel is like traveling in a very concrete way, like in a new vehicle. I get that too. Um, but this is actually, I mean, this is generally a positive card to have. So um, it's moving forward, and it's also to moving away from those limiting beliefs. I get that very strongly. It just feels like somebody was criticized a lot. And uh, very unfairly. I mean, and, and oftentimes that's the case, right? Unless we're really trying to do things to hurt people. But I don't get that. I just feel like it was somebody who was unhappy um, that just didn't know who they were. And it unfortunately affected you in some capacity. So know that you are on the right path, though, with this hermit energy. Um, you know, you're being guided by spirit and you have the capacity, really, this universal energy flows within you. You know, he guides you by carrying the wand and that is really kind of like your magic stick. It's really your ability to wave the wand and have, you know, have your thoughts become things, have your heart's desires become your reality. And so with the hermit, it is about really connecting to, to that universal energy. I know sometimes people struggle with that and they go, I, I've been doing that and I don't see a change. And it, it may be that their mind is just not quiet enough. And so we quiet the mind, but then we go into really visualizing in that first person 3D reality, you know, bringing in all the tones of reality, all the sensory experiences I would have if I was in that end experience. What is it that you want to create? Okay. Um, but there's a real calmness to this and a real peace and a stillness. And it just is, you know, it's like we're, we just are. I get that for some reason. Somebody really connecting on a very deep, deep level. And that's what sets you free. It really does. I mean, it brings in this unconditional undertone to everything that makes you kind of glide through life. You know, there's really no problem that's going to be so big that it'll rock your world because you're not attached to the ego because that's what really brings in the pain is when we're really attached to the ego and that's the devil energy. So you've got the high priestess here. We haven't talked about this too much, but you know, you've got a couple of things here and I do feel like, again, with love, there's potential here. So this tells you there's potential, but you've got this passive energy here they're they're telling you to take action, all right? So if there's somebody that you've been talking to, there is a, um, you've got the right stuff for a, a serious relationship here, okay? I do get somebody that's in sales and I have no idea why. I kind of looked at the Eight of Pentacles when that came in. Um, so if that's you and you know you're dating somebody that's in sales of some sort, they certainly could be talking about you. But with this high priestess, you know, it's like following your intuitive those intuitive nudges, doing the next thing that you feel inspired to do, because sometimes we the ego starts to talk us out of that. I mean, that's the voice that second guesses. That's the ego. That's not the spirit. That's not your soul doing that. And so when we have those thoughts, go with them. Let it go. Let it go and let it flow, as they say. And, um, you know, you'll bring in something because you've definitely got it here. But again, I do feel like, too, for you that um, <clears throat> work is good. I mean, I just keep getting that. Work and money are going to be very solid. So you um, will do this um, angel card here and see what the angels have to say. Somebody had asked me about, like, long-term relationships like marriages. And I think part of why I don't always read those is I feel like the people that are in 
either seeking new love or seeking reconciliation, there's something about their asking. Their desires are so strong that I do feel like that's who I tend to read because that's what comes through. Sometimes I'll get it for a long-term relationship. I mean, I'd say probably 50% of the time I'll get stuff, and when I do, I'll read it. But I do feel like that's why a lot of the channels that you get are not... It's just you can... That vibration and the asking is so strong. So anyway... So they tell you, look for a sign, all right? So part of this, what's important about this is it really builds your belief in your own ability to create your reality. When you start to see those signs, those synchronicities popping up, it encourages us, but it lets us know that we're on the right path, much like the hermit. And those are those bridges of incidents that show you the manifestation is coming to fruition because we don't have to worry about the how. That's the universe's business. You just have to focus on having the end result. When we talk about you know seeing the seeing yourself through first person eyes, um, there's debates on this. I mean, there have been a lot of teachers that have talked about watching it as a movie. There are others though that have given some pretty good examples of people having other people manifest around them when they've done it that way. I personally like to do it through first person. If it works for you some other way, go with that. But either way, when you start to see those bridges of incidents that show these things coming together, those are your signs. They're telling you, you know, keep going. You're in the right frequency and it's coming. Oh, how about this? Be assertive. Didn't we just say that you've got, you've got potential, but you there's a passive energy around you, so you have to take some action. So be fiery, Leo. Don't be afraid to pick up the phone and, you know, say say what's on your mind. Oh, and communicate clearly. Well, that's ironic. <laughs> so as I'm saying, say what's on your mind. This is the card. So be open, be transparent. Because you know the thing is, in a relationship that's going to work, you can do that. But when there's a lot of restriction, you can't say what you think and all that kind of stuff. Is that really the relationship you want anyway? So you've got in the near future, and then let's see if they say, <clears throat> excuse me, yes, no. They give you a yes, and a, um, this is an emphatic yes. You're holding the sun in one hand and the moon in the other. You're the center of the universe, Leo. So great things shall come to pass for you. I love you so much. I'll be back again soon.